Good morning to you all. My name is uh, Tony Huey and it's Chair of the Board of Debating SA. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2017 Debating SA Grand Finals. We acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, their beliefs and their relationship with this land. Today is the conclusion of another very busy and enjoyable season of debating. This year we've had a record 246 teams representing 56 schools across the three sectors. I thank and I commend all debaters who have taken part and contributed this year. I hope that you've learned about and improved your skills in the art and craft of debating as you've gone through the season. I hope too that you've enjoyed working closely with your colleagues and had a lot of fun along the way. Debating SA is totally committed to promoting and supporting debating as a highly valuable and a worthwhile life skill for our young people. We're very honoured to have the ongoing support and patronage of the Governor of South Australia, His Excellency Hu Van Lai. I want to publicly and formally extend sincere thanks to James Tran, Sonia Lowen and David Morton for their unstinting commitment and hard work in organising and running our program as well as providing training and resources to our schools. We thank the army of parents, coaches, teachers, adjudicators, families and helpers and supporters who have all provided invaluable support in so many ways for all our debaters. We thank our host schools for so generously making available their facilities and staff so that we can hold debates. We're very grateful to the Honourable David Spears, Member for Bright, and along with his parliamentary colleagues, for kindly and generously facilitating the use of this facility today. We also thank the Parliamentary House staff for their assistance. So, what better place to be on this day to hear our top debaters than in this, our very own House of Assembly Chamber in the Parliament of the State of South Australia? A very powerful symbol indeed of our democracy, of free speech and rigorous debate. So all the very best to our two grand final teams today. <clears throat> I'm sure we're in for an enjoyable and engaging exchange. <clears throat> so without further ado, Madam Chair, let the debate begin. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2017 Year 9 Division Debating SA Grand Final Debate. My name is Hattie Mershaw, and I'm the chairman of this debate. The timekeeper is Lily Watkins. The topic of this debate is that we need free range parenting in Australia. The affirmative team seated to my right is from St Peter's Girls School, consisting of the first speaker, Hannah Keogh, second speaker, Paris Robinson, and third speaker, Ellen Zane. The negative team seated to my left is from Pembroke School, consisting of first speaker, Robin Speck, Speck second speaker, Ethan Nichols, and third speaker, Kate Crowley. This grand final debate will be judged by a panel of five adjudicators who are Carolyn Chichawa, David Wilkins, Henry Saxton, Mitchell Bronker and Samuel Messina. The speaking time for this debate is five minutes. A warning bell will sound at four minutes. A double bell will be sounded at five minutes. If required, a continuous bell will be sounded at 30 seconds after the, speaking, uh, after the second bell, indicating that the speaker must conclude their speech. I ask that all mobile phones and other electronic devices be switched off for the duration of this debate. I declare this debate open and call upon Hannah Keogh to open the affirmative case. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for today's debate is that Australia needs free range parenting. We, the affirmative side, define the topic to mean that free-range parenting, as defined by Cambridge Dictionary, is a concept of raising children by encouraging them to function independently with little parental supervision relative to their age of development. Furthermore, there is an acceptance of realistic personal risks and conscious and reasoned decisions are made by parents. Children are not simply allowed to roam around with no thought or consideration. To need free-range parenting, it needs to be beneficial to the wider Australian society as well as children and parents themselves. Today, I will be discussing the benefits for development of children from a free-range parenting style. 
That is, parenting styles develop independence in the children that is crucial for their development and the free range parenting, free range children are better able to learn risk management strategies that are needed later in life. Our second speaker will be discussing the social side of this debate. She will talk about how it reduces stress for parents and prepares children to make an influence on wider society. And our third speaker will rebut and sum up our case. My first point today will outline the importance of independence and how free range parenting allows children to develop this crucial trait. Free range parenting has many benefits on children's development, allowing for strong foundations with behavior, personality, and ability to make decisions. This style of parenting allows for children to both develop and manage independence. Psychologist Dr. Jim Taylor states that independence is developed only when one is allowed to think and solve problems for themselves, and thus, children depend on their parents to allow for them to develop independence. For children to develop independence, parents must grant children this opportunity for growth by putting them out of their direct comfort zone. Why is this important? Free range parenting allows for children to grow this independence by empowering them to develop independence on their own. A project conducted by research psychologist Dr. Rachel Sherman found that not only do children demonstrate lower physical injury rates, but also greater ability to take responsibility and safety for their actions when allowed greater independence, even at ages as young as six. These crucial skills children must develop in order to deal with the wider world, but they do not spontaneously know what these skills are. They require experience. Simply doing something for a child as is common in many parenting styles, including helicopter parenting, will not achieve this and will leave children grossly underprepared for the real world. A study conducted by the University College London, conducted from 1946 to 2016, found that children who grew up with strict parents were not only generally unhappy later in life, but also generally lacked the ability to make rational decisions when placed in rich, risky situations as a result of not being able to independently learn both how to make decisions and how to deal with consequences. Free range parenting gives children greater autonomy, helping them learn skills how to make decisions that are safe, giving them skills to risk handle in later in life, demonstrating a need for free range parenting in Australia. Secondly, free range parenting allows for children to experience risk in a safe environment. Experiencing risk allows for the development of risk management and resilience, as well as a general improvement in psychological well-being. Non-free range children are kept from experiencing crucial opportunities, so they do not learn how to resolve failure, handle frustration and understand risks. These risks include things from walking home to, from school to managing conflict with their friends. However, other types of parenting remove these risks from children, so that their children are immediately cushioned by parents meaning they are deprived of opportunities that allow, that allow them to develop and learn. Free range parents believe in world proofing their kids instead of kid proofing the world around them. A study conducted in 2009 by Brown University found that children who experience risk in a safe environment are more likely to learn how to deal with situations with real risk outside of a safe environment. An example used was if a free range child is allowed to walk home from school, who knows the way and is equipped with a map and a phone in case of emergencies, then the child is facing risk in a safe environment. So if they do get lost in an unsafe environment, then they will be better at knowing how to resolve the situation, assess the risks and handle the frustration and develop resilience. However, parents are around to give their children support and help them deal with these situations if required. It's just that they don't remove the obstacles for the child, allowing the child to develop their own coping skills for these issues. In conclusion, it is clear that free range parenting possesses many great benefits to children, including the ability to develop independence and risk taking. Consequently, there is no doubt that we need free range parenting in Australia. Thank you for listening.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for today's debate is that we need free-range parenting in Australia. We, the negative team, strongly disagree with the statement. We disagree with the definition proposed by the, uh, by the opposition. The opposition defined free-range parenting as that with consideration of the age of the, of the child and the development of the child. This is not the definition of free-range parenting. This is a form of interpretation of free-range parenting. The clear, alone, unartificial, by itself definition of free-range parenting is in fact, an ideological hands-off approach to child raising and minimising involvement of parenting in a child's day-to-day -day life. Before I begin my case, I'd like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. The opposition stated that free range allows children to learn independence and make decisions and break rules for themselves. Not break rules, sorry, I'm to say. To um, make decisions, have problems, and learn how to solve these problems. Independence is certainly one of the key things a child has to learn in life. However, they are able to learn it without being completely abandoned and rule free. Children are able to grow and learn to make mistakes whilst being looked after by their parents. As a matter of fact, there are some life skills that children simply cannot learn by wandering the woods for two and a half hours alone. Children need rules and boundaries in order to prepare them for a more challenging reality of the adult world, where they will be, by no means be allowed to be free and roam in their environment. We would also like to state that not being a free range parent doesn't mean, as the opposition said, the parent does everything for the child. This is false. All it means is that they can learn in a safe, supervised environment where risks can be assessed by a parent, an adult, an individual who knows what they're doing. Now to our case. As first speaker, I'll be discussing with you the immediate short-term issues with free-range parenting. Our second speaker will explore the long-term side of this parenting style, and our third speaker will rebut the opposition and sum up our team case. Today I will discuss the risks that can arise through free-range parenting and neglect for the child that can occur as a result of it. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one big issue that comes with the very idea of free-range parenting, and it's an inherent lack of safety. The world is not always a friendly one, and there are dangers around every corner. How can you as a parent manage your child's safety while living by the ideology that they don't actually need any protection? There are many threats that jeopardize a child when being left to roam free with minimal parental involvement. First, let's talk about the unintentional harms. Leading causes of accidental death in child, in children, uh, car collisions followed by drowning. Other risks include snakes, insects, dehydration, or sunstroke. Here in Australia, all of these are perfectly conceivable. Many of us, when you see this list of problems, picture the, issue, the classic helicopter parent hovering over their child, ready to strike as soon as an insect breaches a 10 meter radius around their beloved kid. We, the negative team, believe that yes, there is such thing as too much protectiveness. But this doesn't change the fact that these threats are real and reduce and are hugely reduced by parental intervention and involvement. A perfect example of free-range parenting with potential negative effects on the child is that of Lenore Skenazi's son. Lenore Skenazi, infamously known as the worst parent in America, is one of the world's leading advocates for free-range parenting. She left her nine-year-old son in Bloomingdale's, an apartment store in New York, with nothing but a map, a metro card, some quarters for a payphone, and $20. It was up to him to get himself to a strip, a subway station, through the help of strangers. Just imagine the risks that her child was exposed to. Surely she can teach her child the lessons she desires from this exercise and more by accompanying the child on that return home, supporting them towards independence without exposing them to potential trauma and very real risk. The intention of free range parenting is good, there's no doubt about that. But the way of achieving it is seriously misguided and totally unnecessary. Consider something as simple as crossing a road. A recent study by the University of Iowa found that children under the age of 14 have not developed the perceptual or motor judgment that crossing a busy road requires. No matter how many times you tell a child to look both ways before they cross, there are always going to be some that don't do so. This is an example why the ideological free-range approach to parenting is worse than a pragmatic approach. Different children in different circumstances at different times need to be parented differently. Free-range parenting stifles this flexibility. Moving on to a more sinister side of the dangers. Abductions, sexual assault, manipulation, and exposure to drugs and alcohol happen to children in Australia every day. A frequent belief of free-range parenting advocates is that parents worry too much about violent crimes against children, considering the probability of a crime against a child in public is entirely slim. Yes, the odds of a child being kidnapped are 1 in 300,000, as researcher James Walsh tells us. He has found that forcible rape and sexual assault rates are down to 34.5% since 1993. So child crime rates are declining, but why? Logically, it is clear that this decline is attributable in part to a more prudent parenting style. Ladies and gentlemen, free-range parenting is often likened to the romanticised parenting style of the good old days, the 50s, the 60s and the 70s. 
But there is evidence to suggest that with the loss of free-range parenting, there has been a decrease in child crime rate. Nowadays, parents are more protective, giving child crime less opportunity. Is emulating a clearly problematic era really worth it when the cost is our children's lives? Clearly, what Australia needs is not less involved parenting, but more involved parenting, unless we risk taking steps backwards in our development as a nation. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, Australia does not need free-range parenting. In fact, free-range parenting isn't parenting at all. It's just neglect, hiding behind an appealing name and a harmful ideology. Thank you. To continue the affirmative case, please welcome Paris Robinson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for today's debate is that we need free range parenting in Australia. As second speaker, today I'll be speaking to you about the social side of this debate. My first point is that free range parenting reduces stress and strain on parents. And my second point is that free-range parenting prepares children for making their influence to the wider society. However, before I begin, I'd just like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. We disagree with the opposition when they say that children who are free-range are exposed to more risk. We disagree because risks exist either world, whether you are parented by free-range parents or not. They happen either way, and parents just need to learn that um, lumps and bumps are part of childhood and they just need to do with it. Um, we also disagree with the opposition when they say that the lack of safety for the worst parent in America who let their children go with them that to get home. Um, we disagree because our speakers, this is safe risk. In, the, in this particular scenario, the child, they knew the way home and they were equipped with a mat, money and a phone just in case they got lost or something happened. Now on to my first point, that free-range parenting reduces stress and strain on the caregivers of a child. In the Guardian survey of 10,000 Australian parents, it was found that 70% of parents use, use stricter parenting styles due to fear or concern for their child or their future. Of course this is understandable. Parents not only want what is best for their children, but don't want to see their child get hurt in any way. This could include bullying, kidnapping or injury. Our first speaker has already demonstrated the benefits for children in her speech. So how does free range parenting benefit the parents? Although the previously mentioned fears do have solid foundations, overprotective styles of parenting typically make parents more anxious and fearful, which can lead parents to become more protective of their children, which allows them to be less independent, found in a study conducted by the ANU. The same study also found that not only does free-range parenting combat this by allowing parents to develop greater trust and confidence in their child, but it also builds a stronger relationship between parents and children, both of which reduce stress and strain on parents, especially as the child grows older. Parents are not always going to be there for their children, and therefore not only must the children be capable of being independent, but parents need to have trust in their child. We're not suggesting free-range parenting is going to suddenly mean that parents don't worry, because of course they will. However, it builds greater trust and respect for the child, which can reduce strain and concern on the parent about the child's ability to cope when they venture out into the real world. Free-range parenting fosters trust for the children and reduces strain on the parent, and this is why we need free-range parenting in Australia. Now to my second point, that free-range parenting prepares children for making their influence into the wider society. Our first speaker has already demonstrated the importance of developing independence and the ability to take risks with the children themselves. 
However, this is also crucial to Australian society and workplaces in general. Workplaces and societies thrive on the ability of citizens to not only make decisions with confidence, but to take leadership and responsibility. Free range parenting allows for these crucial skills to be developed. Without these skills, we are creating employees without problem solving skills and or the ability to take risks. This will undoubtedly limit our progress in society. Studies conducted by the University of Melbourne have shown that there is a correlation between stricter parenting styles on children and their ability to succeed in their career later in life. Free range children were found to show more initiative and ability to deal with the setbacks. Without free range parenting, children develop no real sense of consequence as they haven't failed or been forced to fix problems that they created. The University of Idaho found that in 2013 longitudinal study, free range children are able to better control their behaviour, not only as children but as they enter the workforce. They can better manage conflict and anger. This skill set up children for the rest of their lives, especially in the workforce, where these skills are crucial for success. Regardless of whether parents are overprotective or simply being strict, the lack of independence means children are more likely to act without considering the consequences, which is detrimental for social cohesion. Free range parenting prepares children and gives them the skills to be a successful contributor to society. In conclusion, free range parenting is still parenting. It's not neglect, it's just allowing kids to grow up with a sensible exposure to failure and consequence. They're letting their child be more independent in creating a series of teachable moments where the child will mature and develop into a successful citizen. It is therefore clear we need free range parenting in Australia. Thank you. To continue the negative case, please welcome Ethan Nichols. Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, as stated, the topic for this morning's debate is that we need free range parenting in Australia. As my team's second speaker today, I'll follow on from my first speaker's point about the neglect and the loss of safety that comes with free range parenting by talking about the both, both the mental and physical dangers to this concept of parenting. I would like to remind the audience that we disagree with the, the affirmative team's definition. Free range parenting is an ideo uh, ideological approach to parenting, while children dictate their own lives. We cannot give free range parenting a positive background just to sound safe. But before I do so, I would like to rebut some points made by the opposition. First of all, the opposition said that free range parenting builds independence. The opposition has said that the idea of free range parenting can enhance the personality while this may be, and while this may be the case for some children, at certain stages of their development in some circumstances, it isn't a blanket that can be thrown over every child. Also, with the idea that children do what they want when they want to do it, at their own discretion, their personality may be enhanced, but is this necessarily the kind of personality we want? Especially at an early age, not being led into new challenging experiences will fact, in fact stunt the development of personality that might have otherwise had made the person who they are. The opposition also stated how the um, children would, don't learn how to resolve failure. Free range parenting is when a kid jurisdicts their own life from any age. Children who fail, perhaps falling from a high ladder, puts them in a wheelchair for life. We agree that parents need to be there to help when a child falls, but free range parenting is where children dictate their own lives and parents won't necessarily be there. The opposition also talked about how parents would have stress. Parents will have stress, yes, it is a part of parenting. It's irrelevant to the topic. A style of parenting refers to the responsibility and work of raising a child. Free range parenting is just neglect. The opposition claimed that our um, worst parent in America child was entirely safe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a four-year-old boy alone in New York 
asking strangers for directions. Can the opposition understand how that could potentially be dangerous? Also, the child didn't have a phone, he had quarters. Now to my case, today I'll be talking to you about the long-term benefits and quality of more involved methods of parenting rather than free-range parenting, as well as how every child is unique and needs to be parented differently. Australia needs pragmatic, responsive parenting, not an ideological approach as favoured by the opposition. Free-range parenting can amount to an abdication of the role of a parent. Being a parent is all about promoting and supporting the physical, emotional and so social and intellectual development of a child from infancy to adulthood. Parenting refers to the responsibility and work of raising a child, not just the biological relationship. By adopting free-range parenting, and are we parenting at all or just neglecting the children? In the more involved styles of parenting, parents and children spend substantial quality time together, share interests and experiences. Parents will often facilitate experiences and op open new possibilities that children couldn't possibly access on their own. The opposition may deride parent involvement with negative terms like helicopter parenting, but they can't uh, articulate arguments about why Australia needs its parents to be less involved than they already are. In reality, if anything, Australia is currently suffering from a lack of involved parenting due to long work hours, hectic lifestyles and mobile phones and other reasons, but the opposition is proposing to just make this problem worse. Worse. Both Jennifer Trainer from a stable health clinic and Terry Castle, who is a well-known American critic, give several reasons of why involved parenting is in the child's best interest. To start, the child feels supported. When a child is roaming free, they are most likely not going to receive the necessary support from their parents. With involved parents, children also develop a sense of community and connectedness. Having a community, whether it's small or big, is a vital part of life. When a child's life is lived at the child's own discretion, the child won't be trained in family values, won't learn them, and won't pass them on. When kids are given the chance to do whatever they like, they will stay with their preferences, and they are less likely to go and try something new. Children benefit substantially from doing things that they're not good at, from being exposed to new experiences and ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, most of us here in the, this debate are doing something today that we did not necessarily want to do on our own initiative, nor did we excel at to begin with. You don't know what you don't like or what you'll be good at until you've tried it, very often through a parent's encouragement. In, indeed, the opposition here are fine examples showing the benefits of structured activities which tra train children in discipline. Being a part of debating competition is the complete antithesis of a free-range childhood, but look at the benefits the opposition are displaying so well here today. Children who are just left to play Xbox and ride their bikes around the streets certainly aren't the ones speaking to you cogently and persuasively here in Parliament House today. In today's exceedingly busy modern lifestyle, many of our children are growing up largely starved of their parents' time and attention. The opposition are completely misreading Australia's modern social condition. We don't need less parent involvement in Australia, we need much more. Ladies and gentlemen, while certain elements of free-range parenting may have benefits, for certain children in certain contexts at certain points in their, in their development. And we acknowledge that. The majority of children need to be parented comprehensively, not neglected. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition's idea of having a child's life lived at the discretion of the child isn't parenting at all, it's just neglect. Thank you. To conclude the affirmative case, I call upon Ellen Zane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As third speaker of today's debate, I will be summarising our team's argument and rebutting the opposition's case, hence proving why Australia needs free-range parenting. I would first like to point out the flaws in the opposition's argument. Now, the first speaker pointed out a problem with our definition. However, they did not state where this def their definition is sourced from. Our definition was sourced from Cambridge Dictionary. Negative team, where are your sources? 
The opposition also used Lenore Skenazy as an example. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one example that was publicised because free range parenting was so foreign at the time. And also, we are not suggesting that all five-year-olds should now learn how to catch buses by themselves. Free-range parenting is based off the child's capabilities. The opposition is stereotyping free-range parenting as something that is outrageous when it is a realistic, beneficial concept. Additionally, the first negative speaker also stated that we do not need free-range parenting in Australia because of safety reasons. And that the world has certainly grown to be more unsafe than it was year back, years back and leaving kids unmonitored means exposing them to more dangers and threats. Ladies and gentlemen, risks and dangers are inherent throughout society. Parents cannot protect children every moment throughout their lives. Our first speaker, Hannah, demonstrated the detrimental effects of not allowing children to have independence and the ability to take risks. There is a mis misunderstanding about what free-range parenting, parenting actually is. It simply isn't just leaving children by themselves. Parents make a judgment as to whether they are ready relative to their age and provide them with the necessities to help them problem solve throughout this situation. The first a negative speaker also stated that we do not need free range parenting in Australia because of injuries. Now, we have statistics from the Australian Bureau of Statistics saying that abductions of younger children by non-family members are uncommon. Of the 768 abductions recorded in 2013, only 5.86% were of children aged nine years or younger. The majority of child harm reported to authorities is child abuse by family members or close acquaintances. Additionally, the probability of a child being harmed in a traffic accident is extremely low, less than 0.001%. And additionally, a Norwegian university found that there's actually a lower risk of injury to children as they learn to effectively manage their safety and judge risks for themselves. The second speaker um, addressed the long-term effects and stressed on how free-range parenting is neglect. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a reason why a form of parenting is called neglect and another form of parenting is called free-range parenting. We are not arguing about neglect. Free-range parenting is not neglect. They're two different concepts, and in free-range parenting, parents are aware of what their children are doing, and in neglect, they are not. So two completely different topics, hence the second speaker's whole debate is irrelevant. Additionally, the second speaker stated that parents lack involvement. Ladies and gentlemen, today's parenting is mainly helicopter parenting. Helicopter parenting is a growing epidemic of involvement. Parents are spoon-feeding their children, and this does have a negative impact. Yellow Brick, a psychology treatment program's research, research shows that 60% of parents in the nation were helicopter parents, and 95% of university counselling centres are concerned with psychological issues due to helicopter parenting. Additionally, in the second negative speaker's rebuttal, he stated that, the ch that, um, that Lenore Skenazy's child was, not, was four years old. He was nine years old. He had a map. And um, so, therefore, this rebuttal was also completely irrelevant. Um, I will now summarise our team's case, stating the reasons why we need free-range parenting in Australia. Our first speaker, Hannah, discussed the benefits for development of children from a free-range parenting style. Firstly, that free-range parenting develops independence in children greatly beneficial for their development. And secondly, that it develops crucial risk management for later in life. Our second speaker, Paris, addressed the social ideas that free-range parenting reduces stress and strain on parents and that free-range parenting prepares children for making their influence to the wider society. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, for all the points our team has stated today, we strongly believe that we need free-range parenting in Australia. Thank you.
To conclude the negative case and this morning's debate, I call upon Kate Crowley. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate, as already stated, is that we need free-range parenting in Australia. As my colleagues have already explained, we, the negative team, strongly believe this statement to be false. Before I summarise the points made by our first and second speakers, I would like to address and rebut some of the key arguments raised by the affirmative team. The affirmative team's case is focused on two main issues, the developmental impact and the social impact. Their first speaker covered the de developmental case, arguing that they are unprepared for the real world and that they learn risk management and independence. Tr children can also learn real responsibility and how to take risks from following their parents' example, and they can see the best in the way that their parents interact with them and get involved in their lives. Of course, free play can have some value as a part of a child's experience, but when adopted as an overarching ideology, it devolves into neglect. It may not matter if they fall or hurt themselves a little, but it's better for them if their parents are there to support them. After all, if a child befriends the wrong people and is influenced by them more than by their parents, it's almost inevitable that said child will be negatively impacted. They stated that children learn how to take risks. As we stated in our definition, free-range parenting essentially removes the parental supervision and support. Also, a safe risk environment? Our first speaker, Robin, has clearly shown just how many risks are faced by a free-range child. Yes, children can learn independently to combat some risks, but there are many more that a child cannot simply learn by themselves. Any child can walk themselves home from the bus. We don't need to neglect them for them to learn to do so. They argue that children learn independence by being free range. We must state that we never explicitly said anything about doubting the benefits of early independence. However, we do believe that there are large detriments when it comes to early neglect. As Ethan brought up in his speech, free-range parenting is essentially the abdication of the parenting role as a whole. Children are allowed to run free under the general definition of free-range parenting. We have to choose everything that they do for themselves. They don't want to go to school? Great. They don't have to. Drugs? Alcohol? Where do we draw the line on independence? With no parental influence, it simply becomes neglect and not parenting at all. As Ethan also stated, parents are already increasingly spending less time with their children. We need more parenting, not less. Yes, we might like to go back to our parents' childhood when kids roamed the streets, but the reality is that neighbourhoods have changed and there are no longer areas where families have lived for years offering security and comfort. Most people barely know their neighbours. Once again, it's important to apply a pragmatic approach to this. Children in small country towns where everyone is well known could easily wander the streets and not worry. But we're not arguing just for the country kids, we're arguing for the big city kids as well. Sorry. Their second speaker then argued the social case, such as parent stress and that they can make their influence on the real world. It's important to consider, as they did state, that parents are always stressed. But parents who work, in many cases, are constantly stressed. And while it may be stressful for parents to constantly watch their children, neglect is not the best option to replace this. We do believe that parenting is sometimes taken to an overprotective extreme, sometimes instigated by paranoia and fear. However, there is absolutely no reason for us to continue to the other extreme of complete child neglect. And that is the path the so-called free-range parenting movement would take us down. In many cases, both parents work, and it's necessary for them to spend more time with their children. It's only natural that they want to protect the child that they barely get to see. This is why our team believes that we need to approach parenting in a pragmatic way, rather than an ideological one. It's simply not realistic to lump all parents in together. Their third speaker has also discussed some other minor points. She discussed, that she discussed our definition. Our, de our definition was simply removing the bias put forward by the affirmative team. As it wasn't combated by your second speaker, our definition stands. Our first speaker did not state that the world is more dangerous than years back. We stated that it's less dangerous. But why is it less dangerous? Because kids are more pragmatic, pragmatically raised. Yes, accidents are rare. Yes, abductions are rare. We agree, but it's because we've become more protective. Turning now to a brief summary of our team's case, our first speaker, Robin, discussed the short-term, immediate benefits of parents being more involved, such as safety and the fact that free-range parenting is essentially neglect. Our second speaker, Ethan, brought up the long-term and developmental impact of involved parenting. He covered the fact that children with involved parents receive more family time and important values. 
he also discussed the crucial difference between pragmatic and ideological parenting. So, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we strongly believe that we do not by any means need free-range parenting in Australia. If anything, we need more parenting, not less. It's important to establish pragmatic parenting rather than following ideological, unrealistic parenting models. Free-range parenting isn't parenting at all. It's just neglect. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, while the adjudicators are finalising the results, um, I've just come here today to tell you about our Facebook page and also our emailing list. For the benefits of the parents in the room today, we do have a Debating SA email list and it's specifically for uh, the parents in the room who are not familiar with the programs that we run outside of the usual debating season. So, Mr Tran, um, Mr Lauren and myself, we run debating workshops, uh, particularly through uh, February, March um, and April. Uh, before the season starts. We do things like rebuttal workshops, public speaking workshops, and we even do some fun debates uh, throughout the season. So if you'd like to see one of the three of us today, we'll also chase you up um, between the photos and after the debate's finished today to get your email addresses to make sure you're aware, excuse me, um, of what we do uh, outside the competition. So thank you. I call upon a representative of the adjudication panel to come forward and award this debate. Well, congratulations to both teams. I think we can all agree that this was an outstanding debate, so why don't we give them all a round of applause once more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to the Year 9 Grand Final Debate for 2017. As each of the five adjudicators uh, this morning arrived at their decision independently, there will be no individual feedback, as with the semi-finals. Ladies and gentlemen, and to the teams, today's decision was a split decision of three adjudicators to two adjudicators. Uh, congratulations to the winner of the grand final for 2017 is the negative team from Pembroke School. <laughs>
We, the affirmative team from St Peter's Girls, would like to thank the audience for listening, everyone involved in organising this event and making today happen, including the timekeeper, chairperson and adjudicators, and the adjudicators for their decision, and the opposition for putting up a great debate, and congratulations. I call upon a member from the winning team from Pembroke School to give a vote of thanks. We, the negative team, would just like to thank all the parents for coming out and supporting us over this debating season, um, the debating SA management, the Parliament House staff for allowing us to use your venue to speak at, um, our coach, Mr. Freesmith, for dealing with us all year, and most importantly, Sands Girls for putting up a really great debate. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed.